So if you've been a landlord for a while, I bet you've heard some horror stories around hoarding, or maybe you've even encountered this in one of your rental properties. It's not as uncommon as you might think. And in today's video, I wanted to share with you some general information about hoarding and what you need to know as a landlord when it comes to this in case you encounter this with one of your tenants. So let's get to it. So when we think of hoarding, we think of clutter, right? We think of stuff everywhere. But what you really need to know is that because hoarding is technically a debilitating mental condition, it is considered a disability. So for you as a landlord, you need to know that you can't refuse to rent to someone who is a hoarder, nor can you immediately evict someone who has a hoarding situation going on right now. So as a landlord, it's a really, really important that you approach any hoarding situation the right way. Okay, so according to the American Psychiatric Association, the prevalence of hoarding is about 2.6% higher for people over 60 years old and for those people who have other kinds of psychiatric diagnoses such as anxiety or depression. Okay, so how do you know if your tenant is a hoarder? There are definitely some signs. Here are a few of them. Let's say you see that your tenant is really isolated. Social isolation is a sign. Are there bugs and roaches and things like that coming from the property? Are there unusual odors coming from the property? Are they leaving things out Outside and having conflicts with neighbors and also just an excessive amount of stuff in the property. Those are definitely signs you should be looking for. Okay, so there is a site called Hoarders 911 and it has a lot of information around hoarding and it gives you basically five levels of hoarding that you should be aware of. Okay, so let's just talk about those real quick. Level one is kind of your low level. This is really just somebody who's starting to accumulate things. You can see that they have a real need to collect goods, but they're there's not anything major yet going on. There's no odors, there's no bugs, there's no other kinds of issues, but it's just sort of starting. So that's level one. Okay, according to them, level two is where you see the clutter kind of starting to pick up. You see plates and dirty things just laying around. There's some signs of animal waste potentially, and it's just starting to really accumulate. That's what they call level two. Okay, level three, this is when things start to become a little bit more unsanitary. Odors start to develop. Things are left outside of the property. Things are accumulating, it's really beginning to get really dirty and it's not really clean or easily accessible anymore. Okay, level four, this is when you may see some bug infestation. There are piles of things, piles of dirty dishes, animal feces are probably around, probably a lot more odor going on, but it's just getting really worse and people are really starting to notice. Okay, level five, this is when it's getting really bad. You People can't get into the property. It's There's no pathways anymore. The odors are really bad. People are starting to complain plane. There's just an incredible amount of stuff. It's it's not safe anymore because there is no exit maybe for the tenant to get in. There's no way for a first responder to get in. This is when it needs some serious attention. Okay, so according to this site, Hoarders 911, they have this chart right here, which outlines these th five levels that I just talked about and each of the signs within each of those levels so you can see kind of where you might be or what, what sort of situation your tenant's in now. So I mentioned in the beginning of this video that hoarding is considered a disability because it is a mentally debilitating condition. And because of this, it is protected under the Fair Housing Act, which has seven protected classes and disability is one of those. So that's something that you really need to be aware of as a landlord. Okay, so because the somebody with a disability is protected under the Fair Housing Act, you have to be careful and you can't, as I said, evict someone right away. You can't refuse to rent some, to someone who is a hoarder. And violating fair housing laws can be really financially detrimental. First offense, can get you cost you up to sixteen thousand dollars. So be really careful how you deal with hoarding in your property. Okay, so what can you do to prevent a hoarding situation? Obviously, when you do your tenant screening, no matter how thorough you do tenant screening, unless a previous landlord tells you that this person was in a hoarding situation, you're not really going to know. But you can do a few things that can help prevent a situation from becoming worse. So, for example, you could put some things in your lease that outline, you know, that you're going to have treatments 
at a certain point, that how you, what your expectations are for how clean the property must remain. Also, you can put in things like you, that exits and that must be accessible and that people need to be able to get in easily and that none of that stuff needs to be blocked. You can put things like that into your lease and you can check with your state or your county laws and see if there's anything that you can also incorporate around hoarding or around how the property should be maintained that you can include in your lease as well. Okay, so if you encounter a, le a hoarding situation, say your tenants moved in, everything was fine, but you go to do an inspection and all of a sudden, whoa, you recognize that, that this is getting worse. You're now maybe at level three as we just discussed. What should you do? One of the things you can do first is talk to an attorney and ask what their advice is. You know, they're probably going to tell you to have a conversation with the tenant and, and that would be my next suggestion is talk to the tenant. Let them know you're concerned about their health and safety and let them know that you need to make sure that the property is accessible. You can also set up a more frequent inspection schedule so that you can monitor the situation and make sure that it's not getting worse worse over time. And obviously throughout this whole situation, you should be documenting all of your inspections, all of your conversations with your tenant, and just making sure you have a good record if and when you need them in the future. Okay, so the bottom line is hoarding really can become a dangerous situation if it's not managed properly. It can become dangerous for the tenant who is the hoarder. It can become dangerous for the property because property damage can absolutely happen. It can be dangerous for people who need to enter the property to potentially help or save the property from fire or anything else. So hoarding is much more than somebody being just messy or a lot of clutter or somebody who's a big collector. It really is a mental condition and it is a disability. So keeping a good relationship with your tenant, doing regular inspections and staying on top of it if you really think that this is something that's going on is going to be the best way to help the situation, prevent long-term damage and help you manage this the very best you can. So I hope this was helpful. I know this is, um, you know, it's a touchy subject. It's something that we definitely do see uh, more frequently than you would think. So I wanted to just educate you a little bit about what it is, make you aware that you need to handle this carefully so that you don't get yourself in trouble. So if you like this video, please share it with somebody. Please subscribe to our channel and any questions you have or comments, please leave them in the notes below and appreciate you watching. See you next time.